So hey, today I would like to share with you five hacks I learned along the way about notes in Blender. This time I'll be focusing on material notes, but in the future I would like to do one on compositing too because I love the Blender compositor. But grab a cup of coffee, sit down, maybe follow along along the way, and I hope you'll learn something from these small hacks. Okay, so for this project, I had to offset all the textures on these objects to make it look more random. If I didn't do this, then it would just look like this, and you can clearly see how the pattern is just repeating all over the place. So I have a custom node to do this, but if you were to do this from scratch, you'd have to select your image texture, press Ctrl T to add the mapping node and a UV coordinate node. Then you need to set the object scale to the appropriate size. Here I know that it's 0.01. For this project, I also used the object mode and not the UVs because I didn't bother making any UVs in these. So as you can see, now we got the same repeating pattern all over the place. Now we just need to offset it. A way to do this is to give yourself some space and then duplicate the mapping node. And for this mapping node, let's just offset some of these values just like randomly. So if we shift control click the mapping node with the node regular enabled, we can actually see a preview of what the color would look like. The colors representing the vectors of this mapping node. And you can see if we click the other one, then the color is different. So let's just try to mix these two. So let's go back to previewing the image texture. And you can see when we change the slider, the texture will change too. And now I forgot to reset this one back to one because we don't want to scale it the second time. We only want to transform it. So now you can see that if I move the slider, we will get two different results. And it doesn't matter where I put the slider, then we'll get a new result each time. So what we have to do now is add in the object node, object info node, and just plug the random into the factor. Now we will offset the texture with this value, but randomly. So all these will have a slightly offset texture. If you want to fine tune this effect, you can always go ahead and just change the transforms. So this will be like changing the seed of the randomness. From here, I just went on and used some color rhymes and then made myself a specular map and a roughness map and then a bond map. And I just plugged all this together to create this effect. And even if all these objects, they were one combined mesh, you can still make this effect if we add instead a geometry node and use the random per island. This is great because all these have different islands since they are all not connected. So now we just have to plug this random per island into the mix and we should get the same result, but just with a combined mesh. So for this next tip, I would like to show you how to make some cool edgeware inside the Blender material editor. I imagine that this helmet was made of some kind of metal. It's probably actually not, but metal just looks nice. And then I mixed my French flag plastic with this metal shader. So now we just need to add the edgeware. And a way to do this is to add a bevel node, put the radius way down and then add a geometry node because the bevel node is actually just the normal output of the geometry node but with the edges just a little bit blurred. So what we do now is just add a mix RGB and then mix these two and then pick the difference. If you set the factor to one, you can see that you get this result. So it's actually just the edges which are separated. Now we can add a color ramp to control the intensity and you can adjust the radius to get a, a tighter or wider edge wear. So we need a nice image texture that we can blend it with. I got a nice one off of Megascans, which is just a scratch metal map. So again, we can change the mapping of this one if you want to, and then just mix these two with a multiply. Now we will get a little bit of this texture shown only on the edges. But to make the effect nicer, we can add a contrast node and just make some pre-contrast on this image texture. Oh, and here we have a problem. So I'll just switch to object and then set the flat mapping to box instead. Okay, so now we have some edge wear here, but we would like to tweak it a bit. So let's make the radius a bit bigger and maybe just add a multiply node. Actually, we already have one. So let's just use this one. Just multiply it in the end. Now we can look at the final result and see how much we want of this. Maybe this is a bit too much. So let's dial this down. If you want to add just a little bit of scratches all over the surface, you can also take the black and just bump it up a little bit. This way you will make the entire map a bit gray and add the scratches all over the surface instead of just on the edges. Okay, so now we got a decent looking. I could definitely tweak this more, but I will leave it for now. Some other ways of making these effects is by using the pointiness feature from the geometry node. This pointiness attribute just gives you a very weird gray image, but if you put it into a color ramp, then you can squash these two together in the middle and you will get some nice edges. This doesn't always work. It depends on a lot of your geometry. And that's the cool thing about the bevel because because the bevel works on almost everything. You can also use the ambient inclusion node. So it's more for dirt, which is in the crevices of your mesh. And again, if you just plug that into a color ramp, you control where and how much you want of it. This way you can find some really nice edges on your mesh. So for this one, first of all, excuse me for not cleaning up the node tree, but I would just like to show you how to do the custom clear coat that I'm using for almost all my cars. You can also do a clear coat in the principal shader, but I don't feel like that one is so good. 
If I were to compare the look of the two, the principled clear coat and the clear coat shader that I'm using, which I learned from Cinecat Pro, you can see how the one I'm using has more of the feel of like it's glass that's put on top of the car. It just looks a bit thicker, which I think makes the cars look better. So to create this one yourself, what you need to do is add a glossy BSDF and just put the roughness to something really low, like 0 0.002. So now we need to add a mix shader and a Fresnel node. So what you need to do is just add a math node and then add 0 0.033. What this value is, is basically the reflectivity of the surface facing the camera. So if I set this all the way to one, you can see how our car is completely reflective. And if I set this one to zero, this part here will actually be 100% diffuse. To get a realistic result, you have to keep this low, but not at zero. A good value I use a lot is 0 0.33. If we're going to get a little bit fancy, you can add this rain texture into the roughness of this clear coat. I already prepared these water lines and I added the gamma node just to adjust the roughness of it. And then I will plug that into the roughness. And now when we look at it, you see all these splashes on top of the car, which looks very nice, I think. Okay, so I recently worked on this small effect for an animation I was doing. For this effect, I needed these droplets to drop from the top, fade in, and then when they go to the bottom, fade out before they stop. The usual way to do this is just to go into the material and then add a mix node, a transparent node, and then just use the mix factor to mix between transparent and non-transparent. The problem is that, that this works on a material basis. And if I were to do this, it would fade out all the droplets at the same time, which I don't want. So to fix that, I would have to make five separate materials, one for each drop, which would be a mess if I wanted to go back and change the material afterwards. Then I would have to go through all of them one by one. So what we want to do is to be able to change the opacity of these droplets on an object basis and not on a material basis. So to show you how to do that, let's go ahead and then just make a new material. So now we have linked the materials and they all use the same material. Let's go to the notes and add a transparent and a mix shader. Let's go to Eevee and see how it looks. So it looks fine from here, but when we put it to zero, like all transparent, it becomes black. This is just because you have to go into blend mode and pick alpha blending. And if you see this weird artifact thing happen, just click the back face curling because that just turns off the back faces of this mesh, which is for some reason messing up our transparency. So what we need to do now is to add an object info node and use the object index, plug this one into the mix shader. Right now they all disappeared and that's because it's using the pass index from the object properties. So if we put this one to one, then it appears. And if we put it to zero, then it disappears. Notice how we can do this for every drop individually, even though they're using the same material. But this is not very convenient because the pass index does not use decimal. So we would never be able to get a nice interpolation. But to fix that, let's go from zero to 100 instead. And then just use the math node to divide by 100. Because 100 divided by 100 is one. And 50 divided by 100 is 0 0.5. So in this way, we can fade it with the pass index. So what we need to do now is just to animate the pass index. So let's go to the first frame that we want it to be at zero. Let's go to the end. Here we want it to be a zero as well. And then somewhere in the middle, we want it to be at 100. Perfect. We could go ahead and do this all over again for all the other ones, but I will just show you another little hack on how to copy animation and make it single user, which is very important in a very quick way. So let's select all the droplets and select the one that has the animation already. Press control L and then pick animation data. And one very important thing is to remember to separate the animation data because right now it's linked. So that means if I change the animation of this guy, then all the other guys will follow along and do the same. And that's not what we want. We want to be able to change the animation and not make that influence the other droplets. So let's select all of them and then search for make single user and just pick selected objects and animation data. Now, if we were to change the animation of this guy, the other guys will stay the same. Now they also all have this value animated. So to offset this animation, I will use an add-on called commotion, which is very cool, which was suggested to me by Index3D in the comments of one of the other videos. So thank you to you. So the way it works is you pick all the objects you want to offset, set this data to object, and then just put in five for offset to offset it five frames, and then put the cursor on the right side where we want the drop to start from. Now we can just click offset animation and this magic happens. So a really cool thing I love about this one is you can also put the cursor in the middle and press offset animation, and then you get the drop starting from the middle. So now let's check the final result and see if it also is fading like we want it to do. And it is.
One last thing I would like to show is a technique for creating these gradients of the rear lights or the front lights of the car, which I'm using in most of my car models. Let's go ahead and find the emitter deep inside all the layers of glass. This one looks like this, so it has this nice fall off on it, which kind of emulates that there are some red LEDs in the middle, which kind of scattering the light inside the tail lights. Okay, so now we have a nice white emitter, which isn't very interesting. So let's add instead an emission and plug that in. So this far, not so much interesting. So let's get some colors in there. First, let's get a nice warm red color and a orangey yellowish color. Let's mix these two and use them as our emission. Now we're starting to get there, but we still don't have the nice gradient that we want to have. So let's add a gradient texture. You can see right now it has some kind of weird gradient. So we need to do some custom UV mapping on this emitter. So your object is like this. And if you just are to UV map it randomly, you would get some kind of mess like that. We need some kind of straight lines so we can easily map a gradient onto it. So what I usually do is to add to select a like a master face, then press reset, which will reset everything into a square. And now just use the follow active quads and then have remember to have the like the master poly selected. This way we'll get this nice square look, which is very easy to kind of map a gradient on top of. Let's just make it fill up the UV space. And you can always put this one to through 2D cursor, then it's easier to maneuver everything. Scale it down and then maybe up here. Now we can make a gradient from the top to the bottom. So first of all, what we need to do is use the UV coordinates instead of the generated ones. So let's plug the UV into here. Now we have the UV, but it's not really doing what we want it to do. But let's add a color ramp to see what's going on. Let's start to push these. Yeah, now we see the problem. We can just add a mapping node and rotate the C90, no, minus 90. Yeah, that was what we wanted. Okay, now let's start to get that look down. And usually I like to use the B spline interpolation because it's it's much smoother. And I also tend to use white in the middle and black to the sides. Okay, so let's just flip these two because we want it to be red in the middle. So now for the fun part, we have to use the emission. And what most people would probably do is like put this at one and say, ah, oh, so we have a headlight. But if you think about it, a value of one, which is like white. But if you look at the picture, a metal surface will also be white if it's in a reflection, which would mean that a metal surface, which is reflecting is the same brightness as a lamp. No, it's not. If you look into a lamp, your eyes will be burning. So this value has to be high. For this render, I use 20. But technically, you would probably have to go higher if you wanted to be realistic. And see what happens if we add the red glass layer on top. This is almost transparent, but it's just a little bit of red in the glass. Then it adds a lot of color. So even though this is almost yellow, it becomes red when it has the glass on top. And well, that's that's it. And if you want to make anything look punchy, quick tip is just to add a complementary color to the scene. So for instance, the blue is a complementary color to the orange of the tail lights. And that was also why I kind of tried to color the lights a bit more orange than red. And usually I find that if you make the tail lights yellow and red, then it looks much cooler than if they're just red. I think it's something with the cameras that they are kind of distorting the colors, even though they're red to our eyes, they kind of look yellow when you're taking a photo of them. So that was it for this time. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something from it. I'll be back in two weeks time or so with another tutorial, maybe with some hacks on the compositing nodes in Blender. Let me know what you would like to see. But as always, stay happy and see you in the next one, guys.